Well, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? I was sort of, I was trying to wait until the fleet of, of I don't know what they are, biplanes go over the top before I went live with the, with the sound, but I gave up. Are you all well? Are you all ready for a, a fun afternoon? And, um, yeah, we'll just we'll have a little bit of fun. The set is very, very bright, and I thought we might need a little bit of a perk up and a little bit of a little bit of festivity getting ready for Easter and so some things arrived uh, just in time for us to have some fun first of all first and foremost before we get started good afternoon Sharon you were first in the building this afternoon Nan Glynis um, Gail good afternoon Nan oh I'm glad you like it Nan I'm yeah it was it was a lot of fun but there's a couple here that you have seen before but I wanted to have the opportunity to display them in all their glory so that you can see the actual scale of them. Francis, good afternoon. Karen, hello from Kuala Lumpur. How are things up there? When are you coming down? I thought we were going to see you. You were coming and then you got COVID. So let me know when you're coming down. Lynette, hi, Joan. Good afternoon. It is a... Joan, where are you? It's not that beautiful where I am. Where are you? It's a bit overcast today here, but it's... It's still nice. Hello, Diana. How are you? Greetings to you from Australia to Costa Rica this afternoon. Meg, I've got to ring you. Oh, thanks, babe. I need to ring you about a couple of things in your order, which is why it hasn't left the building yet. So you're on my hit list <laughs> this afternoon for a chat. Hello, Dorothy, Christine, Jenny Miller. Hello, sweetie. Barbara Lawrence, lovely to see you. Sylvia, Steve asked uh, if there were many people coming a long way to the soiree. And I said, Sylvia's coming. And he looked you up because he couldn't remember. And he wanted to know where Numerka was. First of all, I had to teach him how to say Numerka. <laughs> and then he got the map out and had a look and he was pretty, he was pretty impressed. Uh, absolutely. Come back later and see us, Deb, and everyone's here. Chris, good afternoon, Maureen. Tina, greetings to Newcastle. Deb, hi, Karen Stiles. Hello, Karen Stiles. Uh, we talked a lot about you this week. Well, no, last week, because I was down at Mark's. As you know, Karen couldn't come for our kind of pre-soiree. I thought it was going to be fun. Margaret had me working so hard. I came home exhausted. But I've got a couple of little things here to show you from Karen. First of all, here's my bunny. Bunny was supposed to be on set before me today. Bunny Bunny's on set. Uh, I went and bought a bunny, not a fluffy cute one. I bought one with attitude. Um, hello, Karen Leone. Marie Noel, hello. Oh, Katie Kay's here. Welcome to Chandler's Cottage. Hi, Belle. And how's your block of the month going? Hey, Kate. Chris. You're all here, Kristen. <laughs> even, even the graphic designer is in the building. Cass is here too. That's to remind me to hurry up because she wants me to show Karen stuff before she goes. I can't if you can see my bunny. So the whole joke was this was our Melba Christmas dish. But I decided, oh, there go the eggs. It looks pretty good in Easter as well. So I might put up a little a little quirky Instagram post about him later on. He's got his arms folded. He's got attitude. Don't mess with the bunny. Now, the reason is Cass is still here. The reason is Karen is here. Good afternoon, Pam and Kerry and Fiona. Fiona, you're still up. Not night shift. Going soon. Uh, Kathy Douglas is here. Oh, Kathy. Kathy's here as well. Kerry's here. Right, right, right. Megan's having a haircut at 4 p.m., but free from a part of that. Hair. I need to book hair. Need, need good hair by the soiree. Better be done fresh just beforehand, yeah? Yes, okay. The reason Karen's in the building, we made her watch today, is I'm in possession of her soiree samples. And Cass is here because she's going to be sneaky and put in the link for the soiree information all at the same time. Maybe, maybe I'll do this camera down this way. If I do this, I think this will give you... <gasps> Look at this. So... The soiree, just quickly, because I need to catch the girls before they, my you, before they nick off. The soiree is happening on the 14th and the 15th of May in a beautiful little town called Garfield. And we have booked the Recreation Centre, you know, the Recreation Park. 
to get you all together for a wonderful day of stitching and frivolity, if I said that correctly. So Karen dropped off for me yesterday her samples because she's a little bit busy for the next month <laughs> before, um, before the soiree. So we wanted to make sure we had them in the building so we could show them to you, take pretty pictures of them, pop them up on Facebook. So if you follow Somerset Patchwork, Karen Styles, Margaret Upston, Margaret Fabrics, Chandler's Cottage, Lisa Chandler Designs, any of those, you're going to feel like it's Groundhog Day because we're going to pop them up a fair bit. Now, this is the Saturday project. So this beautiful little fabric bin basket tub, I'm not... I think it's a basket, I can't remember what Karen went with. We'll see it on the pattern on the day, won't we? Is gorgeous. Paper piecing, stabilized. Look. Just stunning. So the whole idea is you'll get started on the day. You won't finish it on the day, but you'll start it and you'll get three projects if you come on the Saturday and a three completely different projects if you come on the Sunday um, to the soiree. And you can book it through trybooking.com. So just keep that in your head as well. And it is $75 for the day, which gets you three kits, one from myself, one from Margaret Upston, and one from Karen. So this is Karen's Saturday project. So all of our kits are worth at least at least $15 each, plus you are getting a lovely, yummy high tea for morning tea from Margaret, Karen, and myself. And we're going to have a lot of fun. So it's, a, it's, it's really good value, but you get to hang out. With a heap of lovely like-minded ladies. I do love that, Karen. I might, um, yeah, Margaret and I want one too. <laughs> we want one too. All right, so that's a Saturday project. Now, when I show you Sunday, you're going to go, hmm, but the value of the kits and everything are actually the same because of what goes into them. But this is the big project on the Saturday, and then her Sunday project is this one, this cutie here. So I'll show you. This is her beautiful little star paste pin cushion and I love that all day long. It's indented, see that? Indented in the middle. And it's filled with crushed walnut shells, which is a fantastic thing to put in your pin cushions. And that all comes as part of the kit as well. So that is just gorgeous. So you can just imagine, I reckon, I, I might be wrong, Karen might correct me, but I reckon you get close to finishing that one on the day. And then of course, You've got the pattern, so you can go off and make it yourself. So these, you know, we've all got those gorgeous little bits left over in our stashes. So you make one with us on the day, with Karen's help, with lots of other lovely people. Have a nice day out, and then you'll be able to go home and use the pattern again to make more of these up towards Christmas presents. Perfect timing, this soiree, for that. Same goes for the basket. You'll be able to go home, do it all again, and uh, use your bits and bobs that you've got to make another one. Beautiful, beautiful. So I need to very carefully and safely pop these away so that they don't come to any grief. Um, oh, Karen's making the kits as we speak. <laughs> Upston, you cannot join the class. You okay. have to, no, no, no. You have to walk around the room and actually help encourage and shoot up all of the lovely ladies coming and help me serve the morning tea. You can't do the class. We've been through this. You can't do the class. We actually, we thought we all might get, get together so Karen can give us a, uh, a separate class just for us. Angela, hello. Blue Water, Townsville. Wow, you are a long way from here. And Chris is here from Perth. Fantastic. And Christine Meyer just does the whole thing for us. Greetings, everyone, all around the world. That's about right. They haven't, I haven't seen the UK girls on yet, but um, there are, we, we've done the double time difference. So it might be too early for them now. I know we get to watch Natasha Makes, don't we, two hours early and now instead of nine at seven. I'm not sure how that works, but they may, they may all still be asleep. I'll pop these over here. So I'll bring them back in and show them to you again over the next couple of weeks. Um, but the main thing is, if you are going to come, please work your booking in. And we've had lots of questions about, can I sit with so-and-so? I want to sit. And that's all fine. You just put your booking in. You contact me at info at Chandler's Cottage or through the Tribe Booking website. It goes off to Cass. Cass is in control. 
of she's like the wedding planner she is the wedding planner she is getting all of the tables together of girls that want to sit together so if you if you book and organize a table for six or for four all fine and well they're under your name but if you book and then so on someone else says I want to come I want to come can we sit together they book let us know and we seat you together that's, what, that's all it means and if you just would like to come and hang you can do that just come and hang and um, you can always put a note in and say Lisa I'm doing the applique sampler with you could you please sit me with anyone else doing it or anyone that you know that watches Facebook live with you could you please just pop me in and we will we will do all that too because we know who you all are so we'll pop you on little groups but it's going to be good who would have thought my event management degree would come in handy Cass I didn't even know you had an event management we will talk later degree I didn't I didn't know that I see Fiona says thank you for changing my seat no problemo it's it's all fine because evidently Cass has an event management degree really you think you know someone for how long 12 13 years and you don't know them at all she, she knows what my degrees are hello Bernadette okay a bit dehydrated today haven't drunk enough so where shall we start I think what we will do today is have a quick look at fabrics and I say quick because there's a lot on the wall but I think I know how to do it a bit quicker and then we're going to get stuck into um, our bunny ear basket because I see lots and lots and lots of them on Instagram and Facebook and I get overwhelmed and inspired all at the same time so today I'm going to show you how to make one uh, from a free download that's already on my website and then we we have we can tick off the social media bunny basket and that's what we're going to do and then it's going to be up to you how long you want to hang you can hang with me if you want to you might have other things you want to do but I have started making a tech tote now Natasha um, has my tech tote patterns and she ran it uh, on her show in the UK a couple of weeks ago and I just my brain just went oh, tech tote and Sally Kelly because Sally was arriving in the building which she has so I've started mine and uh, you can download the pattern you can buy the pattern and we will send it to you or if you're in a quilter's life you know what I'm going to say you are going to get the pattern and I want to finish making my new one to put as the image on that pattern that's going on a quilter's life so um, the pattern as a download is $12 but your monthly membership to a quilter's life is 10 so if you haven't joined up yet please do because it's it's worth it every time we put a pattern up it's worth joining um, so I think we will do it that way around and then you know if you want to take off you can or you can stay and I because I've got to make the second panel and then I want to assemble it and then I've also had requests just from a couple of people of just a few hints on how to sew on our um, beautiful shopping tote handles so you know I want to combine all that together all right first of all there is a banner at the top of the page as per usual for uh, on our website for today's specials Stephen's been buying apps again for the website if you have a look at the banner now have you seen it yet it scrolls it scrolls now so it's changing over between the specials for today and I'm so embarrassed to say he didn't ask me he just did it there is a countdown for how long you've still got to join up for the be mindful block of the month literally down to the second go and have a look at it later I said Steve he goes oh it's pretty cool mum <laughs> so because we close off in two days time so he's literally put a countdown of how long you've got and I'm going to breathe a bit easier when we do reach that deadline because that's why you're not going to see me until Tuesday next week because I want to get all of those done I need to finish assembling my block of the month uh, applique sampler so this is it until Tuesday next week um, but in the top there is a banner that's scrolling alternatively with the be mindful countdown for what we've got on the website today so if you click on that it will bring up everything um, that we've got on the set sometimes I miss things I'll tell you about them but I think we're nearly there today this divine divine thing I'm, I'm sorry do I want cushions do I want a dress do I want I don't know I suppose it's a big tote bag 
but again the, the size of it is is just it's big enough to pop in a panel in a quilt you know big block seminole border around it i don't know but it's just beautiful so i've popped that up so you can actually see the whole scale and take note there is a gorgeous gorgeous yellowy oaky color in the middle of all the flowers so if you need a little pop and you might want to grab i'm very telly selly aren't i again i'm sorry <laughs> It just happens. I don't know what goes on. Sorry, girls. If you'd like to grab a pen and paper, this yellow here I think is a really good match. Is that better? I got really oh, shopified. No. Um, this is one of our uh, Northka Colorwork solids. <clears throat> it is color 550, and it's called saffron, which is so perfect. So that that's under today's banner I've got it in a couple of other little things going on but if you if you love that and you just want that little pop to go with it just write that down um, and you could grab that to go with it because I think it's it's rather lovely we as you know we sell our solids in um, half meter lengths on the internet on the website if you if you just want to slither if you want 10 centimeters what you do in the comments underneath on your order, there is a spot you can put a comment. You just put, Lisa, can I have 10 centimetres of saffron? Uh, and we will organise that for you, okay? Because sometimes I just think you're not going to need a half a metre if you're buying half a metre of this. So if you want that little slip, like we did with those Northcote shimmers, a lot of you took me up on that went with the landscape quilts that we had on Sunday. So that would be perfect with it. I want to add another thing to this as well because... I thought we did it again. Too much sanitary. Um, I was sitting up watching one of my distributor shows, I think, uh, overnight. They do lives, and I think that's where it's come from. My persona. See this lovely thing? This was a sorbet, not a gelato, ombre that we had. And we did we, that infamous Boxing Day sale that I did, that I told you all afterwards I did with COVID. Um, it was one of those and we've we've missed it it's been taken off the website but I still have it in stock so what I would actually like to do if you order a meter of this at least a meter of this I'm going to give you half a meter of this for free that's like with your free steak knives okay so if you order at least a meter of this you're gonna get half a meter of the green because I think it's a winner it's gonna go and I don't want to have to put it back up on the website. So uh, I've got, I think ratio wise, based on what's left on that bolt, which is from here about six meters, I am good. So um, we will organize that for you, okay? Um, I can do that because Steve won't be filling the orders tomorrow. <laughs> All right, then up the top, can you see up here, I've got three that match. Now Ruthie, from WA grabbed a dark shimmer as well that looked really good. I can't remember what it's called. There's a dark shimmer I haven't keyed. But these are all perfect with it as well. So I'll just pull them down and show you. I'll pop the overhead on for these. Okay, so if you've got your pen and paper there too, just, you know, I like to show you what all goes together with things. You can see this one goes through to a more of a slightly violety colour, but it does work with it. Uh, this one is marked up. So that's that's gelato in colour P. This beautiful thing is um, raspberry. So I just take you back to the set. You can see that up there. It's stunning. You know, it, you know me. It, you, you know what I would do. This would be a bag. There'd be a pocket on the side in black, and there'd be one of these ruched with a bit of that green underneath. You know what I would do with it. So that one goes beautifully. And this one is dust cream soda how appropriate so this is one of the metallic shimmers now you oh that's not right you we don't have metallic in that particular print but but we've got that yellow and so the yellow makes really makes it quite acceptable and friendly to work with the shimmer that's got that little speckle of gold in it okay so that's raspberry you wanted to make a note of that. I just think I was looking at these as well, girls, and uh, we never did that second um, applique essentials pack 
We've got the dusky pink one, you know, that's got under the Australian sun flowering gum and a few others in it. <coughs> Excuse me. But I never did a bright pink one for us. So looking at these, I think that will be next on my list. And we're out of teal at the moment. So I am, if you're waiting for teal um, in the applique essentials, sorry, I will get it done. We were out a couple of the original ones, so I'm just replacing those at the moment. Um, Christine Jenkins, I'm hoping the patterns will be available online also. This is for still showing Tuesday specials. What is going on? Okay, if you are, it is Tuesday, Jeanette. If you are finding trouble with the banner, is the banner not working? Is the, is the new banner that he's put up not working? If that's the case, just put show 37, all one word, though no space in the middle, even though someone kindly said that. Kristen, thank you. And Steve should be home shortly, so I will get him to double check the banner um, for you. Because he said it was all working. I'll just put it in, please. Check. It's like Groundhog Day. But he should nearly be uh, back to his place. All right. Show 37, no gap. And it will get you to everything that you want to see. Just in that little search window at the top. Um, Christine, not sure which patterns you're referring to. If you are referring to the patterns for the things for the soiree, the answer is no, not for now. They are being held just for soirees because we've got another one coming after that. And we really want it to be something special, something really special. Oh, I see what you mean, Leslie. Not at the moment, no. They are just for soiree. Sorry. But we have to make it special. We have to make it special for everyone. Let's go this way. I popped the poppies back up because I'm down to the last... two meters on that bolt and so if you haven't grabbed your poppies yet please do um, the other reason for putting them back up is I found in one of those new ombres that we got in on when did we look at them was that Sunday Sunday one of the new ombres that came in was P2 P's over there P2 this way this this gets us to, uh, closer to that beautiful coral color that we want so, look at that tummy down there. So if you did this with a combination of, um, there's one that's O for orange, which is not under the specials, but if you, those together are going to give you all of the shades that you would want to go with these. And again, this is your feature and then all your little blocks you're going to do with your leftovers cut up, nine patches or whatever, the ombres are going to get you in good stead for those. So I'll pop that back up there. Okay, and then in the middle of the stand, I've got in the bolts that I got in of Sally, Sally Kelly's new collection. She's so different to what I do, yet there's something about them that I, I absolutely love them. I uh, absolutely love them. Jeanette's fine, mate. I'll get him to fix it. Um, I think it's, it's because they've got that little feel of liberty about them. They've got that little feel of kaif about them, but they've got the punch without it being really in your face and it's not really fine detail like Liberty. There's this, she's managed to position her design style smack in the middle of a whole a lot of other influences that I love and created her own look. And that's what I love about it. Now, different to my fabric and, and uh, some of the others that we get with Liberties, they are solid coloured, so they're what they call flat block coloured, they're not shaded like mine. Um, so that means we're able to use really effectively all of the solids with them. Now I know a lot of you are telling me how to suck eggs with that, but a lot of people sort of only buy things like this, like me, like these, that are all delicately shaded. These are just one colour per shape. So, 
I'm going to pull these ones down and show you. These are all the small prints that I've got. Now, first of all, this is the big, bold, beautiful one here. I'm not going to pull it down. I'd love you to have a look at it on the website. I can just hold that up for you a little bit better. It's absolutely beautiful. I have not even had the chance to go through and look at all of the um, all the different colours that she's used it in this one individually yet, except for one I have found that is different to all the other ones that I've brought in. So I'll show you what I mean in a minute, which is this lovely dark shade of green here. But it is a beautiful signature piece, and it does cross over between patchwork, soft furnishings, clothing, everything. It's just lovely. These are... Um, also digitally printed and they are by Wyndham Fabrics so I haven't stopped Wyndham oh, since we probably had the shop in the house a long long time ago but things have changed and the quality of this is just stunning I was sewing with it this morning it's a beautiful silky finish to it but it sets with the iron steadfast it's fantastic so I'll leave that there for you to have a look at if you have a look at our Instagram page as well or on Facebook just before or after the live feed, you'll see a really nice close-up of the detail of that, as, as well as what's on the website. So I'm going to leave that one there, and then I want to show you these. We're going to get sewing really, really soon, because we're going to make a bunny basket. I'm not, I'm not very happy with my light. Again, again, I know I keep saying it, and we're going, I know I keep saying it. Let's, let's just move over near the bunny. Let's move the bunny. Out of the way, bunny. Coming in. Okay. This is our fat quarter pack that I've put together, and these are the five small prints. I don't even like that. That's not working for me either. Let's go back here. Right. You've got this gorgeous one, which is on... What do you call that? Is it like a smoky black, a plum purple black? I don't know. Actually, I've worked it out. I've worked out what it is. Give me a minute. I've got one shining, let's go that way, I've got one shining up on the big wall and we don't really need it. Ha! Right. See that? Just beautiful. Okay, so it's, it's really hot pink pink in here. And there's every colour in here. There's mustardy yellow, lilac pinks, dusky pinks, sage greens, lots and lots of colours in that one. Blue. And it's not dark blue. It's that periwinkle blue. Look at the lime. Look at this lime colour in here. That's the pale one. That's what I'm making my bunny basket out of. I, I see English paper piecing overload. I really do. That's the other blue. That's the darker blue. So I've, I've picked out some solids for us to go with these as well. And the bugs. Now I'm sure I ordered more than the one bug, but you know, it was like waiting to book tickets to a concert when this stuff went live on the distributor website. Um, I'm sure I probably had a couple more. That's what I got in for. So I'm, I'm very happy. I'm very happy that I've got these. But you know, we will we will have fun with these. And, you know, if the rest come through, then we'll be really happy about it. So if I hold those out, I'll lay those out like that for you. They'd make great corals for the panel. Yes, they would, Kathy. That's awesome. That would be that would be really, really good. I think someone fixed it. Did someone fix it? Someone fixed it. Someone's fixing something for me. Thank you, whoever it is. Okay, I'm just going to pull these out. All right, so we've got bugs. But then we do a little bit of a mix and match because they will go together beautifully. Then I'm happy with that too. And then, But then I can take this and it will go with this. So they all mix and match together. So that's why... I've done, I've, I've put up some fat quarter packs. If they run out, I need to delegate them again from, um, delegate them again out of our yardage on the bolts and we can do all of that. But they're the ones that I've put up as a fat quarter pack. The other thing I wanted to show you, just, just on an off side here. This 
this is our fat quarter pack from Sunday, which we've only got a, we've only got three or four of left. They all got gobbled up. Have a look at this. Look at that. That's the coral. So, or the kelp. That's the kelp print. So that's why it's tagged on today's show as well as the fat quarter pack too. That works really well. And it's just amazing, isn't it? Ha! Huh. That works too. Well, I never. So you can see they're really, really clever. Ha! Huh. Sorry, I'm having fun now. They're really, really clever. Um, and now I have to just, just do that. So the, the tech tope I'm going to make this afternoon, I want you just to keep this, this pack in mind as well because it would equally make up a gorgeous tote. These here. All right. I think if you've got liberties and they're the brighter, more contemporary ones in your stash, these are going to go. They really are. Pop those there. Now, the other thing, oh, while I remember um, today, because I had. Because I had, there was something, oh, just, just because I could, there's only one metre of this left, it's called Peacock Garden, I've marked it down a bit, and it kind of, it, it kind of, it, it plays very nicely with everything else on the set, so I've just tagged it and I've marked it down as a metre, just in case you wanted to add it to your stash, I'll pop that back there. Some of the, oh, you're all, you're still all on Sunday. We had fun Sunday, didn't we? Some of the fabrics will work with the under the sea panel. Yes, yes, they will. They all will. Um, and if I had more of the panel, I would bring it out. It's gone. I've only got the fat quarter packs left. This is the, um, this is the other one. Oh, Tell you what, I don't want lockdown back, but lockdown meant no planes. This is what I have put together as a pack called Sally, Kelly and Friends. So this is a fabric roll and I have mixed up the five Sally, Kelly, small prints with Gorgeous, gorgeous Northcote Shimmer. I had so much fun. Northcote Shimmer Solids. And this whole pack is $34 for endless hours of fun. I'm just, you can see what I'm doing. I'm having fun, but I'm just laying them all out so that. There you go. You can see them. So what we have here is one, two, three, four, five. Two, four, six, eight, nine. I'll just give that a little shake. And this gives you everything you need, at least two, to go with each of the feature prints. So, for example, this one here goes with those, but it also goes with that and that. This one here goes with these two and that. Um, and this one here, there's the green, there's the mustard, there's the hot pink. So they're, all of them are covered. Look at those two together. With the purple, that one, he belongs with that, and that, and that. So all of them, we've just got heaps and heaps of fun. So if you're doing English paper piecing, oh, think about those, think about our octagons that we were doing on the Liberty bag, or we are, and that little, that little hole paper that you get in between the octagons, you could have this as your feature for the octagons, and then you could just slip a little square, oh, that, that needs doing, a little square of this underneath the square, and you'd have all these different colour combinations going on. So I've popped up again, I've popped up. Just five of those for now. 
if we run out, please sit, be patient. I will get some more done because that for me is a lot of work. So to cut, but uh, if I see more orders, if I see that we sell out, I will immediately um, do some more after the show. So pop that up there. The bugs in particular, I just want to showcase those because uh, they're not a flop. They're the only one that's not a floral. And this is the blue that I'm putting with them. So this is great hyacinth. They pick the best names, don't they? Oh, I'm very flushed. One should not shower just before a show running around like a jook. Look at those together. Aren't they beautiful? So, you know, those two, that on its own, for a little bag or a satchel, a walker bag, nice walker bag. And also for little fellas, you know, they're going to do all the florals, particularly with Easter. If you're doing little Easter baskets or anything, this is going to be perfect to make something. Book covers. Just, just something cute and quirky. Little book covers. For someone special. Super duper. Super duper. Okay. So, that's all those. Aren't they good? Just, I just, you know, just for a change. Just for a change. Um, I'm not sure if we'll get any more in. I'm not sure if there's any more coming, but we are just going to enjoy them, in the, be in the moment and enjoy them. And before someone asks me, that is a 60 centimetre repeat. And I'm just saying that because I was talking to someone about it um, earlier and how nice they were. And they bought up the stack and whack concept to use these. Or our, um, what is it? It's, um, I can't do it. We've got a kaleidoscope quilt. It's not the Melbourne kaleidoscope. We've got another one. It's Great Southern Land or something like that that we've got. Sunburnt Country. Got it. We have a quilt called Sunburnt Country that we have made with the main floral out of Under the Australian Sun. We do your little kaleidoscope stack and white hexagons. Good ones. That would be amazing. And then to, if you did that with this, Grab the roll and do those little pops of colour in between. Very nice. Very nice. Oh, that's why this green is out too. A little bit like the bugs. This is colour. Hang on, I'm going to put my glasses on. I can't see. No, peacock. This is peacock. And peacock is going to give you a better match to the greens in the feature print. So I've, I've popped that up here with it. And I just wanted to show you that this one's really, really good. It's a diff. I've had a look through. I th it's a little bit darker than the green in the one with the black brown background. So this one to me, I don't know why, but I keep thinking of Cruden Farm, Dame Nelly, Dame, um, Dame Mur Murdoch's house, probably because I went there recently. But it's got that kind of early 19th century nouveau feel about it as well. Very nice. I love these birds. So that's in it too. All right. So should we do the bunny basket? Let's let's tick this off our our Easter list, and we'll we'll get it done. The large print, Megan, it is. Uh, and Meg, I can't find one of the ones on your order, so you might have to do a switch. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and to be honest, to be completely honest with you, that's why I need to talk to you. I think, Megan, in my defence, it may have inadvertently got popped into the box going off to the BJ Quilters to make quilts for Peter Mac and it didn't get marked off the list when it got thrown into the box. So I'll double, we'll have one more look, but I think that's where it went because um, if, if you don't know, that's where we send a lot of our fabrics after sales and things. I have to make quilts for Peter Mac patients. Okay. So, this is the front panel of a tech tote. And I've printed out a black and white copy of my pattern because this is the original one that had the cover. It's all set up for you to digital download now. So, this is side one. And I wanted to just walk through with you today cutting because a lot of people 
you know, over time people ring and they say, I cut something wrong or I cut the big bit after I, I couldn't cut the big bit after I cut the little bit, all those sorts of things. So I thought, okay, I won't cut the second side, I'll cut one and then I'll come back and cut it with the girls later. So you can see it's a really simplistic pattern. It, there is nothing really complicated to it, but then that means that you can do you know, pretty much anything that you want. I'm just checking that the large iPhone fits because this was probably, this was designed before we got to the large brick iPhones and that fits in there nicely. So that's a relief. But you know, it could also be my sewing one and I could pop my scissors and everything in there. Okay, so this is side one and I'm going to make up side two with you. I've got my Helen ironed onto this one. I've got my other piece to, uh, ready to go. I don't know what that is. We'll work that out in a minute. I don't think that's anything actually. Okay. So uh, I've also got my lining ready. So my lining is going to be this color. Now before you, oh, I didn't say the important thing first. Do not, do not open. Yes, don't. I did say, didn't I? Don't order the pattern if you're a Cool to Life member. Don't because you're going to get it. And the reason it's not up yet, I was just speaking to Cass before the show, I said, don't put it up. I want to finish mine off so the Quiltest Life pattern will actually have this new one made on it. With a little special for my girls. Maybe. To buy a kit. Right? So, if you're in, don't. Um, if you haven't joined up, I'll show you all about it in a minute. Okay? So, Let's see if I can do this without making mistakes live on Facebook because I made enough mistakes when I was cutting it out before the show because I was talking to Stephen at the same time about exciting things and big things. We've got a huge shipment going off to the UK to Natasha so if you are in the UK, sit tight. It's all on its way. All right, uh, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this little camera so you can follow along. So the main thing. For me, when I'm trying to cut something out frugally and in a hurry, is I will always go through and have a look at a pattern, uh, and I don't, I don't trust that the writer of the pattern has got them in the most logical order to cut from. That is the first rule. And you know what? They're not. Um, I thought <laughs> with my own pattern, but then I realised, I realised why I was having a few trouble, a bit, a bit of trouble with the way I'd laid it out. And it was all because I was allowing for a directional print, so I'm, you know, I have to take it all back. So, first thing to do, when you have a look down a pattern, check that it's all been listed, um, whether it is wide or high. Sometimes people, when they write their patterns, they forget to get a consistency to that. So you want to make sure that all the dimensions are wide by high, or, or vice versa, but you don't want... This is wide by high, and that's high by wide. If you if the, if they're not all the same, in the same order when you cut them or when you see them on the pattern, switch them around before you start because otherwise you can get terribly confused. I'm very relieved to see that this pattern, all of it says everything is wide by high, and that makes my life a lot easier when I come to cut. And I'll show you what I mean. So. I have been cutting my bag out of uh, the fat quarter pack <clears throat> and uh, I think if I was going to make it and I was buying the pack I would grab the fat quarter pack because the fat quarter is ample, the fat quarter is really good to work with and then effectively I could get five bags. Then I would go through, just rewind this Facebook bit a, a bit and have a look at what I've said goes with what because I'd get the pack and then I might buy two half meter pieces of the solids um, that I can see easily go with one of the fat quarters in the pack or two of them and that way I'm going to get all my my extra coordinates and everything for it and then I'd have a look at my stash again if you've got some plain black um, or you want to grab the grey that I've popped up um, under today's show and that you know is going to go with everything but you know Work first of all with the feature prints that you love and you want to work with and then make everything else work around it for you to your to your best economical advantage. And, and I'm going to start saying that a lot because fabrics are going up through the roof. I got a little chart from my uh, fabric agent this morning. I just like saying I have a fabric agent, but you know that. 
um, telling telling us or showing a little chart how much the price of raw cotton has gone up in the last I don't know, I think it's one or two years. It, it's more than double. So effectively down the line our fabric should be at least 25% more and they're, they're starting to go that way so we, we're going to have to need to be a little bit more frugal with our fabrics um, you know and I suppose we've all got to th start thinking relatively what is a you know what is a fat quarter seven dollars compared to and you know me I always say well compared to a large cappuccino a piece of cake or whatever it is um, it's actually not that bad. We're just used to different comparisons and prices of things. You pay that for a piece of cake or a piece of fabric that's travelled halfway around the world and take 12 months to make. I don't know. <laughs> it gets a bit hard, doesn't it? Okay, so on my pattern, if I look at all of my measurements, the widest piece that I need is 6 inches. So, oh, I can't get it out of that bit. Well, that's a good start. See this little bit cut out down here? That was me talking too much with Stephen today. So my widest is six. So I'm actually going to cut a six and I'm also being very careful that uh, I'm thinking about my directional print. So I know that that has to be six inches wide. Now the other thing, uh, I haven't got it here. I'm going to write on the back of my pieces because um, I need to number them. Oh, sorry, put a letter on them. I'm going to get mixed up which one's which. So, I go six wide and then I cut from it everything that is six and a half inches wide. So, I need three and a half and I'm going to label it. You know what? I'm not going to do it in the frizzing because I'm going to be ironing. I'm going to use just a fine sharpie. I can't see it from the front. So that's A. Then I'll go through anything else that I need. When, when I get on my handbag design horse, let me tick them as I do them. A flat bag is always underestimated without a gusset or a base. Uh, they are really, really functional and, and so flexible for changing around. Okay, the next, then have a look at what you need next. Now the next widest that I need is four and a half. So I'm now going to trim what's left of my six inch down to four and this little piece here we're not going to waste him are we no we're going to keep all of those we're going to sew them together later to make a little strippy zipper purse yes i know the zipper purse i know it's not finished all right this one has to be seven and a half high now so i'm going to pop it on the edge here and cut at seven and a half So I just slowly work my way down the width that I need. So that's C, put that in the middle. And that's the only one at that. The next one I need is three and I haven't got enough in this piece. And then down to two and I haven't got enough. So this bit now goes in the bits and bobs basket under the counter and gets saved for paper piecing or purse making. Then I will come back to my other piece again now, if I was doing the front and back panel at the same time, I would be cutting two of everything, but I've already done the back. Okay, so now I'm going to cut down to three inches, because that's the next one. You know I'm not concentrating, though, don't you? Okay, got it, three. And from the three... I can go to eight and a half. And I think what's really nice with a flat bag is I will often have a look at a pattern and I look at the overall dimensions of the actual panels and it, then it is really just like having um, a block to design. 
and I can change it around to anything, absolutely anything that I want. And I love that I love the flexibility, not having to worry about making bases fit and all those sorts of things. Alright, this is my last piece. And now the narrowest piece that I need is two and a half. So the first thing I'll do is cut it down and then I will turn it the other way. And cut. And this one is, when I get patterns like this as well, where there's lots of little different pieces and they've all been labelled with different letters, I do label because mistakes are just made and it, or you waste a lot of time working out which bit was which. So they're my pieces A through to E cut. That's really quick and it would have been quicker if I wasn't talking to you. And this now, after cutting my front and back panels, and a little, a little mistake on the first side. Um, that's all I've got left. So it is really, it's a really good way to use a fat quarter making this bag. Put that under there. They go in the goodie in the goodie bag underneath to use for something else later. Then I need to. Do these ones and this will be the same so bear with me we'll do this as quickly as we can I've already cut my sashing pieces uh, which were only really thin strips now when you when you actually download this pattern and you get the requirements you're going to go gee I've got a fair bit left over of my of a couple of the fabrics it's because I've allowed enough for you for them to be directional prints so that's why some of them you uh, with the coordinate and with the lining you need a little bit more because I needed you to have the height so I've actually had a stripe pattern running this way then I needed the full height of the bag and that stretched over 25 centimeters so I've put 35. I want to say to you if you if you want to get away with about a fat quarter or a little bit less if you've got a, something in your stash you're going to be okay but if you have got directional prints you will need the full requirement that I've actually put on the on the pattern so you know if if I actually had a directional for my um, for my uh, coordinate I'd be cutting this way but because it's a solid I can actually run through more effectively with my fabric and cut this way so we are going to go, the widest one is six, but it's only, a, it's only by two. So should we leave that one? We'll leave that one. We'll cut the four and a half first. We need a couple of four and a halves. I think, you know, I always put a couple of rule on my patterns to have a read through first. Do that with everything because just to be able to sit through and go, oh yeah, if I cut that first, then I can cut that from what's left over. If you know if you're actually going to sit down with a cuppa first, do that because that five minutes could make a very big difference to how much you get out of a precious piece of fabric. Coordinate, coordinate. So that's four and a half by twelve. I think that's going to be what goes under the pocket from memory. All right, that's that one. And then the next one's only four wide, but I will cut it to its end height first. Then trim. In terms of batting that I'm putting in these, as I said, I'm only going to be putting in um, 630 pallet in mine because I know what I'm going to use it for for my laptop and I, the laptop will give the bag its structure. But you could go to a soft and stable if you wanted to, and you might have a couple of pieces sitting around that you can use for that. That one was G. What you'll just have to be prepared for if you use the thicker batting is it's going to get a bit bulky on the sides. So you're just going to have to give it a really, really good press. And the bag might uh, pucker out a little bit on the sides. It's not going to be a bad look, it's just going to be a different look. Or sort of, you know, go into a heavier pleat. 
on the seams. Lisa, tick them off as you go, girl, or you're going to get confused. Right. This one, we'll cut him to his height. And then we'll trim off. Okay, so just work your way through, um, label them all as you go. F. Okay, now luckily I wasn't trimming as I went while I was talking because I missed one down here. Oops. I missed one way back at the start, but luckily I didn't go sideways. You wouldn't have done that because you won't be talking at the same time. You'll be fine. So that is my pocket lining. That is J. Okay, like that. And then there was just one little bit left. And I'm trying to get that crease out so I don't have to get the iron out to do it. Now, from all of that in cutting that way, you can see I've got absolutely zero waste. So, um, just, just to recap, I uh, cut the widest cut the lengths I need, then trim it down again, cut the lengths I need, trim it down again, I slowly work my way around, down, and then I only end up with little bits like this left over. And out of all of a, uh, out of all of the requirements, I've just, I've got that left, and it's, I'm actually really happy about that too. I could actually go back and pop a little pocket inside with that if I wanted to, or if I didn't want to use sew-on handles, I've got enough to use to do um, cloth handles with it. So that's that's really good. Okay, and then of course all these gorgeous little bits we can use. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I want to come back to after the funnily enough after the bunny basket. So let's just let's pull this back down here so you can have a look. So these are my, I've already cut my sashing pieces, they're only an inch wide, okay, so what happens is when you, oh, I'm annoyed with myself now, actually, if I just pull this back and show you, when you sew a one inch sashing piece in, your two seam allowances will butt up against each other underneath. Can you see that? So those two actually sit against each other. And then what that does, it kind of pads it out. It's really nice. It makes the, the narrow sashing on the front actually um, pop up a little bit, like a, like a frame around each of the little panels. So these are going to go there. Then I've got one, two, three. And then all the other pieces that you and I have cut out will make up the rest. That must be them under there. It's a really nice, fun, literally, it, from this point on, I was done in 15 minutes. I was all sewn up, finished, which was a big relief. Because <laughs> I was running a bit short on time. What happens here is you actually put two pieces together and you sandwich a piece of pallet in the middle and that makes up your pocket and you just, you've got another little funny shape piece that you do from the sashing that actually gives you your binding on the top, okay? And then this long piece underneath here makes up the whole back of that panel in the middle with the pocket, like that. So you can see once you've got this concept and how the po layer the pocket in, you you could come through and do anything in here. Absolutely, it can be absolutely anything. And in fact, I um. 
grabbed out a bolt that we got in with high hopes of having time to do something with. This on its own would make a gorgeous tech tote. I don't even know if I need to do anything to it. It, you, you could easily cut your panels to match this. You could easily cut this bit out of here and make this the layered pocket in the middle with a plain black underneath or this beautiful grey, dark, dark grey that we've got up today uh, with it. So, you know, you can go to a lot of work, do as much or as little design work as you want to. Those, as I said, I've got some ideas on what to do over those plain panels. You don't have to do anything. You can just leave it like that with that really nice, super modern kind of retro look and just have it full on pink. Maybe a little bit of quilting detail. That's up to you. Maybe a little bit of English paper piecing with the leftovers. Really nice. A bit of stitching, a bit of, um, a bit of sashiko stitching, maybe a little bit of running stitch in some of the lovely bright colours so that they all contrast against the pink. Lots, lots of possibilities, but nothing too brain draining for Easter. I mean, you'll all be on a sugar rush, I'm sure, but, um, yeah, we don't, we don't need to get too carried away. Uh, okay, you all good? Oh, Sylvia, what happened? Did we fall off? Did you fall off, mate? Fell off on the sound. It happens sometimes. But I can tell you, the sound is on at this end. Alright, so, take totes up as a pattern. Grab it if you are a Quilters Life member. I'm going to finish this off and pop it up for you. If you don't know what a Quilters Life is, this is a Quilters Life. This is our little online club. So the girls... Members in the club, it's $10 a month, and you've got access to a lot of patterns. I do demonstrations every now and then, but effectively, you're, you're well and truly getting over $10 of value a month. Um, it is, uh, the girls are patiently waiting for the next applique sampler demo. There's lots of, you know, lots of stuff that goes on, but have a look through, you know, if you join up, go through and have a look, grab what you want, because as I said, we're going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a clean out in there as well pretty soon so you've got to get in and grab before we clean out before we hit other bigger projects okay on um, on the website on the home page at the top there is another banner underneath the glaring banner that says uh, free downloads and in there you will find the pattern for the festive basket and here it is in its original form as per the photo in all its glory looking very loved grotty it's been everywhere it's been around the world it's visited more places than i have in its hampton stripe original form so it's been to holland it's been everywhere it's been to spain i was there for the spain one at least for a few days okay so this is made up with the banner block that we use for a few different things like the floral kaleidoscope quilt and um, it's got nice tall sides so that you can fold down and get the contrast from the lining. We don't want that today. We want a shorter one and we want bunny ears sticking out of the top. That's what we want. So print your pattern out which is what I have done here. Print your pattern out ready to go and I have reduced the length of the template so this is the original one which will give you the red one but what I've done folks is I have effectively made it a square so I measured this distance across here which was five inches and I made the sides only five inches high so you can see with this we only go up that high. That looks like more than five. Oh, five and a half. My bad. I allowed for seam allowance. So you want this five and a half place from here to there you go. Up there. That's all you have to change. So that when you cut this down, that's what you use for your template. And you'll need to cut four for the outside 
and four for the inside. And then what happens is all of the panels meet up at the base. So if you've got your handbag design book, um, this is the pinwheel base that we talk about in the design book, right? So it looks like it's pinwheeled round if you've got stripes. Now, what we're going to do is sew them all together. A couple of choices for you. If you want to, you can add pallon. If you've got some little scraps, this is a great time to use those up. And then you've got options. You can either piece your blocks into their cross blocks first. like this and then sit it on a big square or if you're like me and you want to use up all your scraps for Easter you can iron it onto these individually so I'm just going to find oh that was not planned I swear pro promise promise that was not planned look at that that's amazing okay Something works. So what are we all doing for Easter? Are, are we doing anything or is it just going to be the biggest sewing fest at your place? Um, I think it's sewing fest at my place. Well it is, that's why we're not going to be back until Tuesday because it is, it is being mindful fest, it is club fest, it is um, vegetable garden retweaked ready to plant for winter. So it needs a lot of love out there. It is also <laughs> Chook Shed Installation Week. Can't wait. Can't wait. And then I can go and get my girls. They don't know it yet, but I'm coming for them. I think it's Australorps, in case you're asking. It's eyes of, no, maybe not. Eyes of Browns, I think. Oh, I can't decide. <clears throat> anyway, it's going to be all of all of that um, a little bit of downtime with the family so um, it is textile pantry new website change over to so our wholesale business we're going to flick the switch at some stage now can you see what's gone wrong here can you see what I have done do not do what I have done please can you see what I've done these two are upside down because I got lazy when I was cutting out and doubled over my fabric, didn't I? <laughs> so two are upside down, but hopefully no one will notice in my house if I'm feeding them Easter cake and Easter eggs. Felicity! Alright, what are we all doing? Oh, Yvonne, you're late. We missed you. Petra, 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 I need to talk to you here now too. Felicity's sister's my sister is coming up to spend the week with me, so we will be sewing up a store. Don't you mean your sister's coming down? Diana's having an Eastern picnic today. Uh, I couldn't go, but my carrots did. Oh, you're hilarious. You are hilarious. <laughs> you're so funny. Ah, okay. There's my panels. We will need an iron. Um, coming in this week are the Teflon ironing mats, finally, to use with our little irons. So the theory is if you don't use uh, steam, you can literally sit them like that all the time. Um, so that'll be really good. So I shall have those up. I'll put them up and then I'll show them to you next Tuesday. I say Tuesday, but you know me, I might just pop in at some point and say hi. Depends how we're going. Um, there's a few there's a few things to do. I, I've kind of neglected my girls again on a quilter's life. Well, not neglected, I think about them every day, but there's uh, a lot I want to share and do with them. And for those that are joining up for being mindful on... Podia. So if you go into Be Mindful and have a look at them on, have a look at the club on the website. There are three ways to do it. You can just buy outright kit done, um, and then you'll have everything to do as you wish when you wish. And you can join also like a traditional block of the month. We've already got ladies in. We're starting a, a new group of ladies through for block of the month, traditional way, pattern with all the fabric each month comes through. 
um, or you can do it on Podia, which is an online club, so every month you get emailed out your pattern pieces and a link to a video, and I'll be making it with you for Steve's 21st. So uh, I actually have to film, I have to start making the quilt so you can see me, you know what I mean, you can see me do it. All right, they're ironed on, and we have got to move out of the flight path. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know Steph moved to Hobart. This is not good. Now, I have to tell you all about the gorgeous Petra who's watching today. And Petra sent this beautiful email to Steve and I going how worried she was about Steve and I cutting lots and lots of fabric and how it's not good for our arms and our hands and everything, which is absolutely right. We're going to pair these up now, okay? Absolutely right. It's not. And so, um, and, but what Petra didn't know was it was already, it was already in the planning. So, Petra, we are off to look at electric cutters on uh, Thursday for cutting because the lock of the month's um, take a lot of cutting and all those pre-cuts and things. So Petra, just public shout out to you while everyone is listening. Thank you very, very much for your kind thoughts and consideration for Steve and my arms and shoulders. And we are on it. We're absolutely on it. They are very dangerous though. You have to wear um, chain mail gloves. You can chop your finger off, you can chop your hand off in one go so we have to be careful but Margaret has one you see and I went that was one of the reasons one of the things I did down at Margaret's is watch it in action so there you go I suppose you all want a video don't you okay a video should we go to the we'll go to the I don't even know where it is now where is it let's go to the sewing machine that's been patiently sitting over here waiting for us to do something Move the cords. Use it. Oh no, luckily you can't see what I'm doing with my feet. Um, and you know, I'm the thing that I probably, you know me, the thing I love about Easter too is the food. And it's it not so much eating copious amounts of chocolate, but you know, there's a lot of nationalities and cultural cultures that have amazing Easter traditions and cakes. Um, Rob and I were over, uh, we went across, we snuck across and had a quick coffee in Oakley on Saturday because I wanted to get a couple of bits over there and very traditional Greek community the cakes, all the Easter brioche cakes with the eggs in are out. So we're just sewing these. Oh, that's a bit small. Let me crank that up a bit. Uh, in pairs, both lining and outside. I've got pallen in here, folks, and it's all uh, socially acceptable to do that because I'm on a machine that has a dual feed. If you don't have dual feed, you really do have two layers of batting in here. So I would pop on uh, your walking foot. We've done all this before, haven't we? We made, did we do this last year? We made Christmas bunting with this shape too. I'm sure we did. Great shape for bunting. Um, Megan is my bunting queen. And what you can do with your bunting, a little bit like that tech tote, is layer up a shorter panel, a light, shorter lined panel over the top. And then you get pocket bunting. I've almost felt like there's a need for a banner block book that's got all the quilts that we make with our banner blocks and our baskets and our bunting, you know, all in all in the one um, all in the one spot, so it's all together. Okay. Once you've got these sewn, lost 
Um, once you've got these sewn, you'll want to give the give the seams a press and sew that they abut each other really nicely. We press them in the same way. Oh, a little bit of a, a little bit of a knot there. If um, hey, on 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 Tuesday, if uh, you've got a banana, I want you please just to. Do it. Do a stock take of all of your feet because, uh, as you know, we're 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 um, we've left the club, <laughs> we've left the Benina Club family for a while, and um, I've still got a, I've still got quite a lot of feet here. Now, the whole plan was is to send them off to Deb at Baxter, but I can't help but think, if someone else rings me after I've done it. And says have you got a cross so we're going to cover that off two ways we're going to I'm going to go through my leftover feet and accessories with you on Tuesday next week um, with them on special and then if there's any left then they'll go off to Deb okay so just just check your feet there's not a lot but there's a couple of lovely wild and wonderful things in there that you might just want to add to your stash Okay, so now, now that I have actually, it's probably easier to see with the pink ones, because I've lined them up and ironed them in the both, both in the same direction, when I turn them round, they actually sit nicely against each other, okay? So we'll um, pop back across to the machine and sew these up. I love my... Oh, what are we got? Oh, Sam. <gasps> Crayfish and salmon. Well, Felicity, you live in St. Helens, so I would expect no less. Because um, you're in the seafood haven. <gasps> East coast of Tasmania. Whoa. Cake all the way. Cake, okay, so we've got lobsters Friday with Jenny Miller. Oh, Sharon's on... Now, Sharon, I'm probably going to be with you on um, Friday, but I might, uh, Rob and I are a bit suckers for a salmon steak, so I'll just do salmon steaks, or I might do them Japanese style, which, um, which I like with some teriyaki uh, and a little, I make something that can only be described, I suppose, as a... Uh, a Japanese ducker, I suppose. I roast seaweed sheets and sesames and stuff and pop them in the blender and sprinkle it on top. Um, yeah, yum. I've also got another wicked thing I learnt from a Malaysian girl when I was working briefly in a flavour company. Great place to work. They did all the flavours for ice cream and pre-mixed alcoholic drinks. Friday tasting session was good. Um, a Malaysian dish, it's not for everyone's taste, but involves deep, it involves frying off dried anchovies with chilli, lemongrass, ginger and garlic. It's one of those weird and wonderful dishes you probably only have every six months, but you develop a craving for it until you get your hands on it. Uh, and you just serve it with fresh lettuce and rice, it's really nice. Okay. There we go. So now I've got my cross block. So if you haven't done this before, it is just a really simple, fun thing to do. And you've got the pattern on our website. Just give that a press. Then you're going to have to bear with me. Go and put the kettle on. Please just, it must be copper time because I need to sew up the sides on these before we can get to the bunny ears. But I'm going to do it because then I can cross my making something special for Instagram for Easter to-do list item off. I don't have any eggs to put in there. 
Oh, well, I could, I could transfer the ones out of the Melba dish, or I could just go and buy some big, what do you think, big pink ones, pink and yellow gold ones. Okay, now we need to make it 3D. So we're going to sew up each of the sides on both of these, then we need to make our bunny ears. All right, so we'll do that. Well, Diana, it is, but you know what? Where you live, the food would be pretty good too. Um, Rob grew up with a mum that in Sandy Bay in Hobart, and they were big, big on curried scallops. So maybe, maybe I'll do the curried scallops for Rob. The curried scallops for Rob. Oh heavens! Margaret Upston gave me an old cookbook um, the other day, a CWA one, and it's got the curried scallops in it. And I think they're in they're in the old cookery, the Australian way too, that we all had at school. So, um, so many options, and it's only Tuesday. So, you know, we've got two more days to get that organized. It's hard with seafood though sometimes, isn't it? Because you, if you want it fresh, it's hard work. Okay. If you, um, just while I'm sewing this up, if you want to have a go at how I'm making my bunny ears, you are going to need a side plate. So just pop off to the kitchen if you're not there. Your side plate, piece of paper and a pen. Um, and probably a ruler, just your cutting mat or something. How are we doing? Right, that's my that's my outside done. Okay, there we go. How quick is that? I just think, just make one up and give someone a pretty pot of pansies or something in it. Just lovely. And, you know, for those of us that are lucky enough to have mums, it's not that far to Mother's Day. Flick, what are you sending me? I can see you're sending me things. Hang on. Alright, we'll do this one. Now, if you um, if you've got the 3D flower fun uh, table runner that we did the other day in your uh, stash, you already have a bunny ear because the petal shape is a perfect perfect shape for a bunny ear. Yes, Diana, it is, isn't it? It is more, yeah, so your Holy Week, you've got, it's a lot of, a lot of bread and sweets. A lot of bread and sweets. Carb overload. Okay. You know, gone are the days, I don't know about you lot, but, I don't really enjoy travelling on big public holiday weekends, unless I was going camping. I don't mind staying home because everyone else goes away in the neighbourhood and it's lovely and it's quiet. So I need to get some... One day I'll try and make some bread. Oh, I think Rob's going to be on to the hot cross buns in the Thermomix weekend. So, uh, Diana, we will be meeting the quota, Costa Rican quota of carbohydrates and bread. Because I think, I think that's what's going to happen here. All right. Now, I have actually sewn all the way around as usual and forgotten to leave a hole, but that's all right. We'll come back to that. Outside, we're going to turn inside out and then inside 
we are going to leave right side out so that when I pop this inside they are right sides together. Then I'm just going to, so it's ready for the ears, I'm just going to pop some pegs around the top. So cute with it. I am, I'm going to go up to Bunnings um, and have a look. You know, also being a bit frugal, I've got a few of those um, lovely variegated succulent grass things, you know, the ones that do the, the long arm thing and they sucker. I've got masses of them outside our bedroom window at the moment. And I could also, and a bag of pebbles, I could also pot up a couple of those, maybe for Phil and Kate, Steve for his place, uh, pop, pop the pebbles round and sit them in one of these, not the pink one for the boys, the bug ones, they'd love the bug ones. So that, you know, if we catch up over Easter, they're ready. And that's the thing, you have a heap of these made in different fabrics in your cupboard. And just any time when you're going to visit a friend or something, just pull them out, bake the bickies, pop them in. Uh, I'm actually making, so I confess, I'm making about 15 of these as the scrap baskets to put on the tables at the soiree in white and silver just so that there's something nice on the table for people to pop their leftovers or their lolly wrappers in because there's lollies of course there's lollies all right so that's ready and we'll set that aside then with your plate with your plate do you like this water ginger beer water ginger beer it's a toss up every time okay I'm going to need the iron again so i'll leave that there I want to show you what I did to make my bunny ear shapes and I shall do it on the back of this pattern and you can see I've already got some drawn up here but I want to show you how I did it. So these have been done with the leftovers of my fabric. Now to make this size it's five inches wide so I had I just cut two five and a half inch strips off the bowl. You can do it from scraps but of course of course you can also do it from the fat quarter pack of the Sally Kelly fabric very easily. Um, I just did it with a strip of each of them. And similarly, if you wanted to do smaller ones, it, with this pack, so easy to do, you shrink down. It's gonna shrink down the sides and the V angle will still be the same. So you can bring it down to a smaller one, just to pop one big egg in or a smaller little pot in. Easy. In fact, you know what, I might go, no, I probably won't go small. I might do a bigger one and a smaller one for the tables because I could put the lollies in them as well, couldn't I? All right, we'll work on that. Okay. So what I did to get my shape, I want you to draw a line for me. How did I end up with my old grotty ruler in here today? I've drawn a line. And then the base of my ears is two inches and and then I've got smaller inserts on my ears that are one and a half. So I've drawn that on to get my shape. Can you see that okay? Like that. Let me just move the drinks because you know you never know who's going to be watching later on. Oh it's one of those food shows. Okay there you go. Then I've actually, you'll see on my plate, I've got two little marks. So this is our little trick we always do with curves and now we're making bunny ears. So I actually was trying to work out how big I wanted my bunny ears to be. So you need to work out the height of your bunny ears. So between those two, mine are three and a half. So if I put my ruler straight across between the marks, it's three and a half high. And if you need, if you feel you need the guide without, you know, you don't want to do it by sight, that's fine. So I'm going to draw a line across the top. All right. Then, if this is two, halfway is one. In between these, at one and a half, halfway is, is three quarters. I'm going to just mark the top line like that. So this is two, one in the middle, one and a half, three quarters in the middle, and then mark directly above those center lines. 
then come back to my plate that I've already got these marks on. And again, this is going to be just you having a little bit of a play around. See what works for you. But now what I can do is line up these two marks on my plate with these marks on the top and bottom lines. Like that. Turn it around the other way. And of course, of course, you can use this for anything, for petals, 3D petals or anything. There you go. And then I'll come over to this one. Now this one's going to be narrower, like that. Okay, so I've got a wider one and I've got a narrower one. All right. Now, I actually want to be able to sit my narrower one onto the big one. And I probably don't want it to go all the way up. So the easiest thing to do, just the easiest, is shorten him. Just make him a bit shorter. So maybe come up, if I come up an inch, or oh, no, not much, about three quarters. Just wherever you think, because I want a little bit of a gap here at the top on this one. So I'll come up three quarters there. And there's the outside of my ear, and this is my little inside bit here. Alright, so just have a play. Rewind it, have a look, mess around with it, you'll be right. So I've actually taken something very similar, or the same. <laughs> so I've got two big ones, and I've actually drawn them onto what's left over. So I've got two pieces together with them drawn on ready to sew around for the large ones. And this is what I had left of my uh, feature print that I've got on the outside of the bag and it's got the smaller ones on it. So now we'll pop across to the machine and we're gonna sew right around these on the mark. If you've got a quarter inch foot with a guide on it, you'll want to take it off now because we want, we're going to be sewing flat on the top. beautiful little, um, I've, been I've been torn, absolutely torn about what to do about my machines because I didn't want to make any hasty decisions uh, about selling my machines um, if I'm not going to be a dealer and I've really been, you know, what am I going to do? Do I just keep them all in case, or we're for one case, when we go back into being a dealer again, when we've moved, do we sell them and we buy new ones? Um, it was, it's been a really tough decision. So because we're really limited on space uh, and because we may be just a bit greedy having too many machines, I have decided to sell this one, which is my 570, and also my 5, sorry, my 720. The 720 um, is the previous model, but only by four months to the 735, and there is absolutely minimal difference between them. So they're both going off to Tim to be fully serviced and checked um, next week. And uh, then they will be um, up for sale. And, you know, they're going to be really, 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 really well priced. And they've only been used when you see me sewing on Facebook. They are not the machines I use all the time. The reason for selling the 570, if all of you remember, I bought Robert a 590 and uh, it's just it's just too silly to keep both of them because they are essentially the same machine except one came with crystals on it and an embroidery unit so there will be a 570 embroidery unit and a 520 and an embroidery unit for sale. So I will get them serviced by Tim. I want him to check them first and I need to be absolutely sure that they are 
as, absolutely as new in terms of being cleaned and oiled and serviced and software updated and everything. And of course, even if I'm not a dealer, the warranty is still the same and I still look after you all the time. That's all the way it works. So, um, yeah, just keep, keep that in the back of your mind. If you really wanted a Benina and you really, really can't, you know, bring up the cash, and let's face it, I wouldn't if I hadn't been a dealer, bring up the cash for one of the newer machines that are a lot more expensive now, then this is a great opportunity or a great, a great option for you perhaps to grab one. They're, um, they're our babies, but it's a bit silly to keep them all. Okay, I have cut these out now, so they've been sewn around. Sewn around, you can just see the pen marks still on them, the Frixium pen. And they have been cut out now with an eighth of an inch, and I have, I've just missed one. We'll just clip, just clip carefully at the top so we can get them pretty pointy. Then I want to give them a press with the iron. Maybe, um, Sharon, I need to neck back up to lint hay and get some really cool, um, some more of those strawberry lint balls. Good morning, Jonathan. How are you? I see I must have been on for a while if you're awake. <laughs> How are you, my buddy? Heavens, my buddy, when are we doing our thing? <gasps> Is it this week? Oh, heavens. I got it. Sorry, I... I'm doing a podcast for John this week, and I've just gone... I don't know that I wrote it in my diary. It was, it was, um... It was, it was late or early when we spoke. Oh, you're on your way to Natasha's now. So everyone wants to see John on uh, Natasha Makes. You tune in at 7 p.m. tonight on YouTube, Natasha Makes, uh, and you'll see Natasha and John in the UK, who are my bestest buddies with Vivian over there. Natasha over in the UK has all my fabrics. And if she doesn't, they're sitting out there in boxes to go this week. All right, forceps. In. I did tag them for today. I put them under the banner just in case. Always work with your uh, scissors on the top of your thumb. Pick up, grab some of the top, pull it over. I'm so teaching you how to suck eggs now because we did this, didn't we? Literally last week for our 3D flower fun, but now they're bunny ears and you have designed them yourself. One. Two. Now, jury is out on how to install our ears. Uh, I know they've got to go into the top seam on that bag, but I've done big and small. These could be appliqued by hand lovingly onto the larger ears, these little floral ones. They could be popped on with a blanket stitch. They, uh, there's many ways that we could do it. What I'm going to do though, is whiz around them. Just because I'm conscious you probably all, gonna we all need to chuff off soon. Okay, I'm gonna push that right up in there. Keep your stitches nice and small so that you can put a bit of force onto them. Jonathan, does that mean you're doing Textile Tuesday? Yes, Jeanette, so Jeanette's just talking about, oh, I have these debates every year when Cave brings out a new collection. Do I want to do K4 or not? And it's a huge commitment, huge, huge commitment uh, to do it. And I think, I think my priority is probably, you know, bring in small collections because um, someone is supposed to be designing new ones herself. And there's a lot of that going on here. But uh, Jeanette said, yeah, Kay brought out these big florals and um, you sort of cut them all down into cushion shapes. 
you know, Jeanette, could you? We could. We could almost. I've got it. I've got it, Jeanette. I've got it. The, see this shape here? Can you see that shape there? What about we do something like take that and then cut out a quarter inch bigger this to sit behind it so they get that little extra pop and division. But what about the birds? What about a topiary tree? <gasps> I'm not going to sleep now. I'm going to blame you for that. A topiary tree in a pot with twisted bias and then have a tree at the top where it's all consolidated down into a ball. Bunny ear. See? I'm done with the planes. I don't know how to avoid the planes. I, I have to soundproof the room. Did you know Melbourne, Moorabbin Airport is, the, is actually, it's got some stupid stat like the busiest light plane airport in the southern hemisphere or something and we've proven that today haven't we okay there you go there's a bunny ear now i think to get these on quick so that you and i can chook off and start working on dinner bringing in the rubbish bins at my house all of that oh gee i have to be really careful though girls because i have got a quarter inch foot on so I can't just whiz off into, and a straight stitch plate, I can't whiz off into blanket stitch. So here's what I do. I, I will just do a running, I'll just do a top stitch here. And I can line up the edge of my foot with the edge of the fabric and get it really nice and close to the top. Of course, of course. Uh, there is the op optional installation of a pom-pom for a bunny tail on the other side. Oh, you know what I need to do now, which I haven't got time to do, is uh, change my hover foot so that it hovers a bit higher. Right, one. I wonder what my mother would do with this if I presented it <laughs> to her on Mother's oh, on Sunday. Oh, I can see the look on her face now. Is it right? What do you want me to do with that now? Unless it's full of yummy things I think mix Christmas and Easter yeah so I'm thinking uh, mountain mix shortbread with big chunks of chocolate in it that sounds like the plan alright bunny is complete so they're just top stitched on and we'll just trim off the the loose ends. I hope you're all doing this. I hope you hope you've printed the basket. You've got your plates out. And you're all having a go. I will. I will expect photos emailed. I'm just trimming these a bit. So the bunny ears. If you can just imagine, we're now facing outwards. Bunny ears can go in flat or you could pleat up a little bit. I can't decide. We could fold. That's quite cute. We could do that. Shall we do that? Just fold in. Just fold in those little bits to give it a bit of 3D. I think so. Let's just run over and I might just do those with the machine much quicker and easier than doing it with a tacking stitch. Sorry, than doing it with pins. We'll just fold that over, pop it under. <laughs> I don't think it's going to like me. Oh, yes, it does. If you've got a hover foot on your banana, you know that you can actually change the height of your hover foot. Did you know that? which I'm going to do right now. Oh, it was quite low. Okay. Right. So now when I stop, she goes a bit higher. Okay. One more. Finish that one off. Of 
course, if you've got a knee lift, you can use that. I'll just fold it over that little bit. And the reason, the reason that this machine, because this is a nine mil machine, okay, so this machine is like, you know, the sports car. The, uh, we call her the Audrey Hepburn. Um, but the reason that she is behaving beautifully doing this kind of really, really fine little chunky bits um, is because I've put her straight stitch plate on. Because she is a um, nine mil throat, so you get all those amazing big decorative stitches, super wide. When you do stuff like this as well, it comes with a straight stitch foot, straight stitch plate, sorry, so that you've only got a little hole, and that means the machine with the needles not dragging the fabric down into that wider slit. It's nowhere near as predominant on a 5.5 mil, but when you get to sort of big heavy stuff, particularly if you're going fast, straight stitch plate is the way to go. I will I will check if I've got any left actually, yeah, before Tuesday uh, for any machine. All right, these now are ready to go and we need to get these down into sandwiched in here. Now you've got to make sure you get it the right way around. So I want my my bunny ears to sit up facing outwards like that. So I actually need to pop it in so that the front of the bunny ear is facing the outside of the basket. I've just put, I've just put a wonder clip in my glass of water. So yeah, we'll only be drinking the ginger beer now. There you go. So I'm, just, I'm going to pop them both in and then we can arrange them a bit. There's a new cocktail for you. The Wonder Cocktail. Goodness. Are we doing, are we doing cocktails? For Easter. Uh, I suppose they're chocolate liqueur things, aren't they? I think, look, I'm going to wing this because, I, again, I'm conscious that of the time. Is it the air show weekend coming up and I just don't know about it? Maybe it is. Okay, they're in. Oh, we're going to see where they come out, okay? So I'll peg him in there. So the base of those ears is going to be taken in around the top. So exactly the same as if it was the top of your shoulder straps going in for your bag. It's the same thing. The flap on an overland bag that comes over the top. Same principle all the way. What will happen now though Ah, uh -huh, thanks Lynette, that's so funny. Um, yeah, it's not enough time, there's no time. I'm going to take my sleeve off. This back so you can see. So that I can pop my basket round. If you've got your machine in your horn cabinet, um, it is quite wide, I think you'll still be fine. You'll get round there, no problems. I will um, have to mic up, I think, next Tuesday. Just because it's just ridiculous. It's like constant flames. Okay, round we go. Now go slowly over where the where the ears are. Uh, next Tuesday, uh, Emma will be back, and um, oh my goodness, so much on next week, but it will be a good show, it will be. I don't want to give too much away yet, because a lot of it's dependent on time to get things done, and uh you know, but we will, I will let you know beforehand what we're up to. I will pop in and see you before then though, because I'm just, you know, in the throes of finishing off those treasure tote bags, and I would like you to see them before then, so I'll pop them in. Okay, 
we are right round. Now I will need to come back and sew up this little hole in the lining that I'm about to open up again because I forgot to leave it open. But if you follow my instructions on the download, you'll be fine. So please do have a think about what you've got in your stash that you can use up to make some of these up for Easter or Mother's Day or Fates or if you happen to be running a soiree for two days in May and you need to make a heap. I actually stashed for it so long ago planning a gorgeous white and silver leaf thing that we had in a pre-cut pack. Oh my goodness, you know what it was for? It was for the bunting. It was for the pocket bunting that we had when we did our Christmas week last year. There you go. What a coincidence. So yeah, that's what I'm making them out of. Oh, that's hilarious now I've thought about it. Okay, turning through. <laughs> oh, it makes me laugh, so it was worth it. Yeah, I think a little bit of, I think if you've got some scrap pallen, um, or even some, even just violin, it needs a little bit of oomph. If you're into jean recycling, they look really nice in denim as well. I've done it, I've done it. I have my, I have my Instagram post. Woohoo! Alright, I'll just give these, um, a little iron. I am thinking uh, you might, if you do this, just be prepared to go back and uh, just top stitch around the top rim because that's going to help these little bunny ears sit up. There we go. I've just got to go back and sew up my lining. Okay, I'll we'll give you a look. Give you a little looky look. There you are. Now, obviously, if I had not been chatting to you at the same time, not trying to do it in a tight time frame, all of those things, um, it might be a bit neater. <laughs> but... It will be out loud and proud on uh, Easter Sunday. This might be for Miss Kate. This might be for Phil's girlfriend, Kate, I think. There you go. So, yeah, you might, I would, I would go around and top stitch that. Give it a starch and then um, fill it with a dozen Easter eggs. There you go. Well, good. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so what did we do? Tech tote. You can <clears throat> grab one. Please have fun over the weekend with it over Easter. Great, great, great to use for... I'm just going to unceremoniously dump everything off the paste panel. Great for using up scraps um, originally done, originally done in Japanese fabrics with some plain wovens and some sashiko. So just keep that in mind as well. But plain octagonal paper pieces like the ones we played with last week those octagons are two inches wide. I just got to heat more of them in today. Oh, perfect. Perfect, because this is three. So the two inch octagons that we've got, English paper pieces, perfect to fit down here. So think about that as well. You could ruche, you could play with bias work like we did the other day when we were doing the seascapes. You could do all sorts of things on here, buttons, if you've got buttons, charms, all that stuff. So please have a little play. So it's set up now, you can download the pattern or you can purchase one. Um, I'm going to finish this one off. It will go in as a free or part of a member, the membership on A Quilter's Life as well. So don't buy it if you're a member at Quilter's Life, whatever you do. Um, and then it'll have this new one on it when I finish it. And then also I will have this up as a kit. So once, once we're done with kits as well, then you can just wait if you want and just buy the whole kit. But I'm thinking we might have to do it in 
a couple of other ones as well because they're lovely and quick and easy to whip up so I'm not too daunted by the thought of making up um, a few as examples of what they look like as kits. I've also tagged today, I should say, I've put under the banner, because um, we haven't got a whole kit together yet, but I did pop up handles because I'm going to use the shopping tote handles for it. And I sort of went through and picked the best colours, I thought, across, across the range. So, first of all, first and foremost, if you just wanted to make yourself a beautiful big tote with the free download Melbourne tote pattern off our website with this gorgeous thing, then the light tan are the way to go. So I have popped those on the list. You can see you don't want anything that's going to compete with the colours in that. You want to keep it all nice and fresh and cream. And I'm quite happy with them with this one as well. But that to, that's perfect. Okay. Then the black will go with... Oh, black goes with most things. The black's going to be what I use uh, for this one. Definitely. So that is the best choice to go with this. And also, you know, you could do this and just have a row of black along the bottom if you really wanted to be a bit more practical about um, what's down the bottom of your bag to stop it getting grotty if you wanted to. But over there and black over here. <laughs> so they go, they're a great thing just to have in the stack ready to go, in the happy stash at home. And then these are blue but they're not really dark navy blue, so they are super with all of these and also with the bugs. So depending on what you're buying, and again, don't forget, if you can't decide or you want us to check things for you, then just put a little note in with your order and we will check everything matches up for you beforehand. Okay, so I feel like when I leave now, it's what can I do before I see you next week. It literally feels like that. I'm going to walk out the door and run because there's so much that we need to get done towards club mail outs um, and lots of things to get ready when I see you next Tuesday. So have, it's only Tuesday today, but have a fabulous Easter. If you do want to know on the off chance I'm popping in, please make sure that you've got um, a notifications alert on our Facebook page and then if I do decide to pop in live you'll get a little ping on your phone and you'll know what I'm doing. I don't do them at two o'clock in the morning so don't worry I'm not going to wake you up. All right so please do um, do that because I don't think I can last a week being really soppy. I might need to see you before then. Have a good one, eat lots of chocolate and then we'll all feel bad about it afterwards okay. Uh, and have a great Easter. Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you. Have a great Easter. Thanks, Flick. Um, yeah, great. Thank you. Thanks, Lynette. It's all good. Louise is here. I missed you. Sorry, mate. Julie was here too. All right. Love you all. Have fun. Um, and I shall see you n next week, if not before. Okay? Bye. Thanks. Bye.